Now we're going to do something that's called a direct germination test, um, which is used typically by most seed companies to determine what their percent viability is of their seeds whenever they want to market something. Um, so usually what they do is they take a random sample of 100 out of a couple of different batches and they do some sowing tests to see um, what the percentage of viability is to determine the marketability of the seeds. Sometimes if they have really low germination, the company can still sell them as long as they overpack the packets and label the seed packet itself as saying that it's um, got a low germination percentage. For this experiment, I've chosen two different kinds of beans that are pretty fairly accessible for people to get. Um, the first, is a kind of mung bean. Mung beans are the kinds of beans that you would typically eat as sprouts. And then I've also picked up a bag of black beans. Let's just go ahead and take a look at these beans. Um, so the mung beans are pretty small. Um, and they've got this little white region on them. That region is where the, the seed was attached to the parental tissue inside the pod. Uh, and the first thing that we want to do with both of these kinds of beans is soak them for about a half an hour. What that does is it gets the seed to imbibe or take in water so that it can start to germinate. This particular area where it was connected to the plant, you'll often see a little bubble form there. There's a little pocket of air that kind of, um, keeps the seed breathing on the inside. So you're going to want to take 60 of these beans and just soak them in water for about 30 minutes. I'm just going to put them in the bag because I'll end up using them. Okay. Uh, we'll do the same thing with the black beans. Oh, you know what? I wanted to compare some of those to what they look like. Um, after they've after they've been soaking in the water for about half an hour, they, they tend to swell up a little bit in size. Um, not super, super noticeably, but if you weighed them before and after, you would end up seeing that there was quite a bit of moisture that they gained. Black beans are the same way, so we're going to just take this bag open. And these are just regular black beans that you purchase in bulk. You could try to do lentils, or you could try to do red beans, or kidney beans, whatever, pinto beans, whatever you find at the store. Um, so here we go, this is what they look like. And already I can see, especially with the black beans, that after soaking them in water, they've definitely increased in size. Let's just grab one here. And then the seed coat starts to slip a little bit on this too. So now I've got the moist one on the left and the dry one on the right. And it's just, I've taken a bit of water so that it can um, start its germination process. Now, after you've soaked these beans for 30 minutes, we're gonna take 20 of each kind of bean and we are going to sow them in three different ways that are gonna serve as a proxy for different moisture levels. So, um, probably the least amount of moisture that we're going to have is going to be this, um, I used a coffee filter here. Uh, you could probably use a paper towel for this if you wanted to, that would work. Um, you want to keep them separate if you're doing two different kinds of beans because sometimes you can have chemical interactions that happen between the two where one would inhibit the growth of the other. So let me just separate these two. And I didn't, I only soaked 20 before I started this video for some reason, so we're not gonna do the entire thing, but I'll show you just, uh, well, let's do like half of them in one. Okay, so we'll just sprinkle these in here. There doesn't have to be, you don't have to have this sopping wet, and in fact, like you probably don't really even need to pre-soak it much at all. Um, just by pulling them out of the water from your bowl here, you'll end up with enough moisture in your in your filter paper or your paper towel. Napkins don't really work that well because they degrade and I would stay away from like Kleenexes and stuff like that, but something that's a little bit moist. And then we're going to fold this so that it stays in like a little envelope. So just kind of fold up and then over and then over 
and then down okay and then we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in a Ziploc baggie um, for a couple of days and we're gonna check it every single day to see um, how many have germinated and for our intents and purposes germination is just going to be defined by having a little radical stick out okay so here's a couple beans you're gonna want 20 for the experiment but like I said I didn't pre soak enough so we're just gonna go like this and then fold and fold and there we go that's our nice little envelope packet so put both of these in Ziploc baggies and then you want to stick them in an area that gets like a little bit of indirect light you probably don't want them in full sun uh, but you want to as long as the Ziploc baggie is closed most of the way at least um, you could leave it open in like a tiny corner, but you want it to stay nice and humid in there. Okay. So then the next treatment that we're going to do is we're going to just put some in a bag of soil. Um, so I've just gotten a couple of baggies here and I will say that if you're doing any color of beans other than black beans, you can probably mix them around in the soil. Uh, with the black beans, you're probably going to want to just sow them on the surface because they'll be easier to find later whenever you're trying to uh, find your beans to count them to see how many have germinated. So just kind of sprinkle them on the surface. Uh, with the mung beans, do the same thing. If you're doing red beans, you could kind of mix them up a little bit in there. Um, but in a little bit, I'll show you what happens to them after a few days. And then the third treatment is just leaving them in water. You can leave them in a bowl like this. You can put them in a cup that has a lid on it, whatever you have available to you. But you're going to want to change out the water every day, it, like just once. Uh, but you want to drain that water off so that you don't get a buildup of any kind of fungi or bacteria in there. Okay, so um, now let's take a look at what happened um, over the course of four days. So uh, 